It's the time of the ascendancy of uh, Galliano and of Body Map and people like that. And I particularly remember the Body Map shows. Uh, I must have been to three or four around that time, so I guess that would be mm, September 85 and then um, February 86, September 86. Um, and so uh, I remember bo Body Map were just radical. They were making these clothes that weren't massively expensive. I mean, they were using a lot of jersey and, and, and things like that, pretty simple fabrics but they were making these wildly creative um, garments. And they were using models, but the models really wanted to be part of it. I mean, I say using models because they were also using their friends. Um, people like Michael Clark were in the show, the dancer. <laughs> was in a tent in 1985 and I may, maybe I got the season wrong I don't know I haven't been back to look at it but it was body map and they had the models rolling up the runway which was wild it was fantastic because you could roll in their clothes that was the point you could go wild and this was that time of, 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 of crazy creativity it was sort of a new romantic era post-punk people were a little bit tired of being so grumpy and they wanted to dress up and get a bit sort of extrovert so you had people like John Galliano and, and Body Map coming out of St. Martin's, which was in its absolute heyday, I think. Uh, and they were doing these shows. And, and, and one season, I know that Body Map then used Helen Terry, the singer. And so she just simply walked up and down the runway singing with no musical accompaniment. But she had such an incredible voice that we were all blown away by it. You had someone like Parachute, and they were this Canadian brand, I think. And they showed up, and all our friends were in the show. All the fashion editors. So imagine now, imagine the front row, instead of sitting there, was actually in the show. It was hilarious. And so there was this real do whatever the hell you want feeling. You know, they, uh, it, fashion was all wrapped up in music and acting and dance and all the creative people coming out of school at the same time. And there was this, this real exuberance of do whatever you want because you can do it. No one's in your way. Punk had broken down those barriers. And so everyone was in their early to late 20s. Everyone was having runway shows. And the old guard was sort of trickling along as they still are, bless them but they weren't in the way, they were sort of showing up to watch the shows as well. And, and the fashion, um, the, the, the great and the good, were in the front row still, because they're like, what is going on here? And, and to be fair, these weren't play shows, they were making money. You know, I remember that people would show at, at um, Olympia, I think it was, and word went round when so-and-so brand broke 100,000 pounds. And in 1985, getting 100,000 pounds worth of orders was big business. I mean, this is, what, 20, I mean, it's only 30 years ago. I was a boy, of course, at the time, very, very young boy. Um, so it was big business. It was serious business. And yes, of course, you were one season away from going broke, but everyone still is. In London in the mid 80s, nobody had any money. It didn't matter. Like I said, you were already one step away from going broke. And so you just did stuff and you called your friends. And I think for those of us that were lucky enough to, to experience that, it left a lasting impression because we can't help but be entrepreneurial. You know, we can't help but look around and look for these people that are going to benefit from being in the show. And everyone says that now, but it was never more, more true than then. That was really the era of the beginning of the supermodels, at least the public acceptance and awareness of them. And so they were in these shows, and they were not, definitely not getting paid to be in these shows. But that's okay, because you needed to be in this show. This is what was happening. I think if you threw one of those designers from the mid-80s into Fashion Week now, it would blow everybody away. I mean, I, th I think back to what Rick Owens did last uh, September with his show where he used the step teams, and that sort of took everyone's breath away, for better or worse, I think for better, some say for worse, uh, because he just did something radical, and people are not doing that anymore. You know, I look at the images of, of New York, I go to many of the shows, and they are very professional, they're very stylish, they're very chic, they're, they're great, they look really good, but they're not really taking my breath away. Now, I look at the images I see of what's going on in London, and they're nice, you know, they're nice, it's good, but I just, when I remember the effect that that had, that really, it, it, it redefined what a fashion show could be, and I wish someone would do that now.